Hello and welcome. Good day. Thank you for joining the stream. Gum, gum. Good, day. Good day. Woo! There's my sound check. Thank you for joining the gum, stream. Gum. Good, day. Good day. Woo! Woo! There's my sound check. Sound check. Trippy. All right, fixed. Sorry about that. Hey, Gonzo. Good day. Thank you for joining. Glad you're here, my man. And thank you for the sound check. Check that out of the way. Um, yeah, so I guess let's jump right into it. And the first thing I wanted to do... Hey, Herdrax. Little echo, yeah. <laughs> Glad you're here, my man. Hope you're having a great day. Jumping right into it, I just wanted to start with a uh, quick non-Morrowind thing here. Yeah, romhacking.net. Here we go. Chrono Trigger Soundtrack Expansion by Power Panda is about to see uh, an update. I think it's 3.1 or 3.2 is coming out. Um, I'm in the Final Fantasy for Ultima Discord. Power Panda just had an update last night. Um, this is not MSU1 dependent. This simply puts cut music and uh, also, I believe, some fan... Uh, yeah, here we go. From the DS releases um, back into the ROM. And you see it as early as like the first scene in the park uh, with the princess. You get one of them like real quick here. Uh, very cool, though. Um, I played the earlier... This 3.0 version is a little bit bugged, but I played it for a little bit. Not enough to get to the bugged part, but a little bit to be like, ooh, that's great. Yasunori Mitsuda is, you know, one of my favorite composers for games. Just mind-blowing stuff in the Xenosaga games and uh, Xenoblade. Um, he only did the first Xenosaga, but yeah, Xenoblade soundtracks, just some of my favorite game music. So I love riding bike to Xenoblade music. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyway, just want to call this out. Definitely going to be playing this uh, once that update comes out. And yeah, I'm a huge Chrono Trigger fan just since I was a wee lad. So yeah. Wanted to give that a shout out on here because, you know, aside from Morrowind, I love SNES games. So yeah, uh, this is something uh, I'm working with Benjamin, uh, the author of Delta Plugin, on a little bit here. But uh, let's see. Whoop. I have... Uh, uh, let me find the link here. My bad. I wasn't ready. And I just closed the chat window. Here we go. There we go. But Benjamin has an interesting little tidbit here in the Delta plugin readme that I noticed the other day. Uh, don't even really remember why I was looking at this. But we've got a really interesting little tidbit here. I'm going to make this full screen. And it's this part right here. Filtering plugin data. And in a nutshell, what this is saying here is that we might be able to produce something like, for example, an updated version. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Herdrax asks, can you hook us up with the link for this? I'll drop that in the chat momentarily. But what, in a nutshell, what this would offer us is the ability to make, for example, an updated version of this one, which those of you who've been following for a while may recall that this is no longer compatible with Beautiful Cities of Morrowind, for example. Um, this Delta plugin feature for filtering plugin data. Right here, this example that Benjamin put in here is supposed to, it doesn't quite work right, and I'll get to that in a second, is supposed to basically scan your mod list and make this. Now, it's not going to, like, move the files into the right place, right? Like, you'll have to... So what this is doing at a high level is it's changing the model path to be grass, and that's what the engine is hard-coded to look for for ground cover stuff. Everything becomes magically ground cover when it's under there. And it's looking for uh, object IDs that match the pattern grass, kelp, lily pad, um... And yeah, so it's going to it's gonna effectively automate the process of making a customized version of this. So let me go ahead and throw that link in the chat for you, as promised. And uh, so it doesn't work, as I mentioned, at the moment. The syntax of that, like, if you copy and paste this command and try to run it as is, um, it's not quite going to work right. Um, and I'm on the uh, Matrix channel for port mod. Which, uh, if you're not, if you're on Matrix, I strongly encourage you to join the Port Mod Matrix channel. Uh, not a lot of conversation on there usually, but you know we're on there chatting, hanging out, 
And uh, yeah, I'm just talking with Benjamin about it. Uh, it looks like he also encountered some issues reproducing this exact command. So, uh, you know, hopefully in the coming days uh, we'll have this sorted out. But, I mean, I'm pretty stoked that by the time, you know, we're ready to publish, you know, version 6 of the mod list, we'll be able to either provide a, a plug-in directly to people or provide them a way to make it themselves. Certainly we'll provide a way to make it yourself, right? Because you could just have this example. So anyway, yeah, this is like, uh, you know, big. In my opinion, this is very big. Because one thing that we sorely have needed is stuff to make making ground cover less of a huge pain um because if you've ever dabbled with it it's not really that easy and so things like acid zebras lawnmower and whatever are very welcome so yeah uh keep an eye out on that join the port mod matrix and and join the, the conversation benjamin and i are just actively discussing this on there and yeah so that's something i wanted to mention and we're gonna go ahead and check that off so uh on to this um if you were with us yesterday you may recall CFG generator mystery issue. And I went ahead and actually solved this this morning. Excuse me, I was having coffee and getting frustrated. Uh, just the fact that the issue exists at all in the first place. And I went ahead and did this. I just want to show you guys what I did. Uh, and so what you're seeing right here is in the highlighted bit of text, um, this plugin dict remove. I'm just explicitly yanking it out of there. You know, I figured I'm done trying to uh, divine what's wrong with my spaghetti code. As I've chatted with a few of you, you know, here on the stream and privately, you know, we just need to, we really need to rethink the CFG generator, how we represent data so we can do this in a sane way. And I've had a few ideas, actually. Um, I really need to start, like, putting these on, in a ticket or something, uh, issue on GitLab so I don't forget them. But, yeah, we can do this in a good way that doesn't require silly hacks, you know. So, so for now, I'm just doing this nasty thing. You would normally never want to do this if you're not aware with coding best practices and stuff. There's a lot of things wrong here. There's a, this number here. Who the hell knows what it is? Hard-coded in there. There's this name of the plugin, which we know what it is, but it's hard-coded in there, you know. So... It's making a lot of assumptions about things external to this code. No good, no good. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, just get it out of there, you know. Uh, <laughs> remove thing. Yeah, I like to use descriptive variable names. Naming is a known hard problem in programming. So Gonzo says, by the way, remove thing. Nice. Naming is a, you know, it's a known hard problem in programming, but I like to give things names that make sense, right? For plug in, for a thing in the dict, it's a thing in the dict, and then we got a thing, plugins holding things, right? <laughs> Just me trying to give names to things that make sense if I look at them down the road, you know? So, anywho, yeah, you'd never normally do this if you were trying to make a maintainable code base, but the way I see it is we're going to delete this in the near future, you know, when we fix this part of the website. So, for now, it can be nasty and, as I will demonstrate... Nasty as it may be, we no longer have area effect erroneously in the list. And just to demonstrate again, I will comment this out. Save the code. Let's open the shell. Make sure we're loaded. Good, good, good. Just to demonstrate the problem we had before. There it is. Ooh, nasty. Ooh, no good. I will watch that reload down there. Good. Reload the page. And away. There you go. It's gone. So a bit of a brute force approach that is hideous from a coding perspective. But, I mean, it kind of matches the style of the rest of this code, you know. And, again, we're going to go back there. We'll fix it right. We'll make the CFG generator better, which will make it more useful overall. So that's it. Got rid of that. We'll be able to, with that, we'll be able to be one step closer to actually um, wrapping up the CFG generator. And one of the things I want to do eventually in the stream is we will go ahead and put a bow on that change, push it up, um, and we can resume the review process. So, uh, but unfortunately, we're not done with the CFG generator woes. Uh, somebody on Discord was kind enough to hit me up privately and mention a few errors a few more errors in the CFG generator, and apparently for uh, the dynamic distant buildings mod, we're missing two plugins. Indeed, we are, for a total overhaul at least. We're going to have to look at the other ones. Caldera Mine Expanded is also missing. That's one we've had problems with in the past. You know, we just keep talking about repeat issues with the CFG generator, which is why a rewrite is so important for this thing, because it just is becoming a constant time sink. Uh, but uh, further, on the note of Caldera Mine Expanded, we have yet another issue, and apparently this has been verified in the comments of the mod. Basically, if your house rattering, you're screwed. Um, 
there's a point where you can't proceed in the quest. It is worth, I think, possibly removing the mod or going to the aesthetics-only version. But also, I feel like this should be fixable. So I don't know. Maybe similar to yesterday, how we looked at the Caldera Priory mod, maybe we can look at the script for this one and try and see what the problem is. I feel like it says here, unable to move after talking to the required NPC. I feel like something like that would be pretty obvious, right? Like we are doing like a some MW script command to remove player controls. For whatever reason, it's not happening. Oh, but on the note of the Caldera Priory, yeah, Telvani for life. I hear you, Herdrax. So this one would be just one I would never hit. Um, on the subject of the Caldera Priory bug, I was able to sync up with the issue reporter, and as it turns out, their uh, journal index was 10 points lower than it was supposed to be. The script was looking for 30. They were at 20. So somehow they broke progression in the mod and ended up, yeah, in some hideous state. Um, I don't think it's an OpenW-specific bug. But I have no idea what it is. So, so yeah. Anyways, and yeah, back to what uh, Herdrax just said, you know, Telvani, House Telvani is the greatest house. However, I definitely want to see this happen. Um, and, and I mean, this is a great mod. And, uh, you know, the content, all the content of the mod is great. So, it would be cool to maybe lend a hand and, uh, you know, send a patch out to the drunken mud crab if we can. So, perhaps we'll look at that today. Um, I wanted to do uh, further to a discussion I had with Herdrex. I wanted to do a quick demo of the patch process for Walk in the Park um, and Immersive Mournhold. These are two mods. This one by Seeloff. This one by Random Pal. Those two names should give you an indication of why we want them both. But unfortunately, the latter places a lot of things that overlap with items from the former. Uh, so I took a look, and it's a kind. Of, it's one of those, you know. Uh, conflicts that's like not hard to fix you can see what's there pretty obviously wrong um but it's very good tedious you know the process will be incredibly tedious so there could be ways to make it simpler with lua if we wanted to like take a brute force approach but in any in any case perhaps we can do that today um but as promised today i wanted to spend at least the second half of the stream looking at uh the 6.x lineup assembly zachogenic hey welcome I'm really glad you're here, man. Uh, the Lua Wizard himself uh, says uh, when 0 0.49 comes out, dynamic distant buildings will be doable with Lua. So uh, that conflict won't be a thing at all. That's awesome. Uh, and yeah, Zach, totally welcome. I'm glad you're here, man. Um, I personally, I just want to say I've done a few of those distant replacers um, with MW script. And yeah, I mean, if we can make them simpler with Lua. I'm down, you know. Um, there's a reason why I haven't touched Raven Rock, honestly, because I saw kind of what's happening with Lua, you know, and I thought, huh, there's a there's a better way for sure, and we're going to get journal access soon, you know. So, yeah, I mean, we could definitely do them in a very nice way. Um, Zach says, I will have it in my mod soon. Not released. N again, not released. Hey, cool, awesome. Looking forward to it. And, uh, yeah, you know. That's great, because I avoided that one. I just didn't want to touch it. Um, and then, yeah, so the second half of the stream, though, I wanted to look at some of the new stuff we got. We'll start to make, like, a formal list of what's new and what's going in there. Um, Zach Util's hype, Erdrak says, and I agree. Yeah, that's going to be some good stuff. Um, 0 0.49, not released, that is, Zach says. Yeah, for sure. Unclear when that will happen, but, uh, you know, we're not going to jump the gun on that. We're still trying to get 0 0.48 out the gate. So, and then, yeah, um... Since we got this uh, sort of area of effect is, uh, issue resolved, we'll be able to do a, a good uh, deploy of the beta website and get that review process uh, cleaned up. So yeah, um, excuse me, let's go ahead and do this real quick with the area of effect arrows issue here. And so just to wrap it up here, we've got, uh, oh man, we did this, <laughs> this is over a week ago now, we did this here, um, we mention that people following these lists are going to skip the area of effect arrows plugin. Um, it's going to come from BCUM itself. I actually want to make sure that we save that. Take a quick look at the local copy of the website that I got here. Arrows. Yep, there it is. Cool. 
Um, you know what? Let's go to change log. A week ago feels like so long ago. I don't even really remember <laughs> any of that stuff. All right. Uh, da -da -da. Arrows. Okay, there's no. So we didn't quite get to putting a change log in. All right. We can do that. We can do that. Mm. Let's go ahead and make it today's date. Hmm. Ah, well, there we go. And this is actually not on there. All right. Updated to instruct mod list users to not use the area effect arrows plugin. I think that's pretty good. Good as it needs to be. Uh, yeah, yeah, we added it. Okay. So let's bump the date here too. Ha, huh, yeah, I put, <laughs> I put, you know, just kind of a desperate grasping at straws to figure out what was breaking my horrible code, put quotes around the thing. Didn't, didn't do jack, of course. Gonna go ahead and discard that change. Uh, add the plugin. Ooh, yeah, we gotta get back to this, the footer. I do want that. Um, erase more garbage code flailing around trying to figure things out yep okay I'll accept that and uh, let's when in doubt quote it out you know it <laughs> especially with YAML and I just want to YAML document I want to give a quick if you've never read this use your fr your favorite search engine find it I feel like whoops <laughs> I feel like I have brought this up on the stream before, but if you never read this, read it, and uh, you might learn some things about YAML, or maybe you already knew some of these things. Um, anyways, I'm not going to go. That's way off topic, <laughs> uh, but it's re semi-relevant because OpenMW forces you to care about YAML sometimes, and I forced myself to care about YAML by using it. Okay, uh, right. I wanted to check if we had an issue for this particular thing. Um, I don't think we do area. No, no, we don't. All right. Okie doke. All right. Feels good to finally have that one solved. I annoyed the... That really annoyed the whole process. All right, now let's just real quick while we're here. We got our little footer down here. Let's go ahead and center that up. Good, all right. Um, hmm. Not really sure. Uh, how about the tips page, right? Tips. Tips would be pretty good to. Tips. Oh, that's interesting. It's uh, 
unexpected color. CSS time, kids. Why are you dark? Oh. Okay. Apparently, I did it to myself again. We got to open this in a browser that is not furiously cached. There we go. That's what you want to see. So I'll just be annoyed at this, but ignore it. Um, and I will nuke this uh, and give this a better name. Uh, footer nav. Gonzo, nice. I think that's an acceptable alternative. Doesn't clutter up the buttons, but makes them one click available. Exactly, yeah. And again, this is a pattern I've been seeing people write about um, kind of in tech circles, you know, as a way to not have nav menus at all and keep pages uncluttered. Um, I rather like it, you know, as somebody who's own, my own website is rather minimalist, you know, and the, even this one you could say pretty minimalist, even though we're using Font Awesome and stuff. But uh, it's out of the way, but no, also noticeable, you know, Um I think it works. So anyway, this, I assume, is the right link, because otherwise, yeah, it would have blown up. What else do we want there? <laughs> Some of these funny glitches in the Matrix. Your wife coughing in the back at the exact same time as mine here. Freaky, her Jack says. <laughs> that is wild. Hmm... It is funny when I hear her laugh. I'll say something and I'll hear her laugh. Uh, what are we? What are we really missing here? Um, you know, CFG generator for sure. I just have gone to this so many times. But what else? Maybe we can just leave that and and continue going. And and as we get annoyed at things, we can add them here. Sounds good. I'm doing that. All right. Um, CFG generator woes. Woe is me, the man who wrote the terrible code. But at least we got a shortcut to get there. All right. Let's take a look. This is pretty bad. Um, we want, you, you know, you want people to have this. Otherwise, they're going to see Stronghold pop in. And So here we go. Two matches here. Hey, Fane. Hey, welcome back. I'm very glad you're here. Hope you're having a great day. Hello. Uh, we're just uh, working on fixing some website bugs. Please join us. All right. And we're going to take actually a depth, uh, a, a dive into the deep depths of terrible code that I've written for the CFG generator. All right. HM. Nothing hard coded here. Here we go. Okay. I almost certainly broke this when I added my uh, BCOM Ghost Fence plugin for this, uh, which is a hard fork of the of the Ghost Fence one for various reasons only Todd can explain. Maybe some mortal somewhere could. Not me. Anyway, this isn't working. That's our problem. Now we try to reason with this code. Hmm. T. 
key. What's so good about this one? The number must be. I must be using this key somewhere else. Hmm. Now, what if we do... What if we do this? Aha, there we go. Okay. So this works as intended. So what we're doing here is we're saying if there's a preset in the... if the, I'm sorry, if there's a mod key, a mod name matching the one that we put in the query, you know, do this special stuff. For example, this should remove the, the commented out one. Yeah, boom, there you go. So it's working. That's working as expected. This, though. Time for some puts debugging. Hmm. And we should see... Okay, hello world, okay. So far, so good. Four times... I tell you, one of these days, I'm going to get the chat overlay in the video, I swear. One of these days. Oh. Uh, so I feel like... Are we looking at here... Something is clobbering the key. Uh, okay. Something is clobbering down here. Or wherever else I'm putting in keys. Uh, incrementing a number. But where? I never want to look at this block of code again. It's giving me nightmares. Oh! It's not even happening here. It's happening in my other semi-hideous block of code here. Plug in order. Here we go. Oh, uh, yeah. That's that's the pro. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. What we've arrived at here, folks, is the fact that I'm assigning these numbers here. And in this automated process of incrementing I'm giving something else those numbers. So this is again another case where having a, a just a sane, better way of handling this, you know, where I can say on a plugin, we very very well may start working on this next weekend because it's giving me so many headaches. You know, a database table for plugins and their relations. We desperately need this, um, but I'm gonna so I'm gonna do another bad thing here. And I'm going to hack in where if we are at number 566 or 567, go again. You know, we're going to reserve those numbers specially, which we don't want, which will, if we don't fix it soon, will cause me more headaches down the road. But for now, just in the interest of getting this working and knowing that we're going to make a better way, we're going to redesign this system, we're going to hack it in. So, okay. Let's see here. If count, and let me just double check what we're missing here. Right, H and R. So, 566, five, or count. Uh, nope, not gonna work. Yeah, magic numbers. Embrace the Todd way, Fane says. Yeah, exactly. We're really embracing the Toddness right now. Feels like I need a shower, but we're doing it. Um, right, so... We're gonna do count 
plus one. Uh, wait, that's wrong. There we go. And then, uh, what is the, um, There we go. I'm going to go to the next part of the for loop. We're not going to do this. We're going to go back up here. I hope. Let's see. Right, we're going to have to recrunch the data. Good minute to grab a, a sip. Good moment. I just want to take another moment too uh, while we're waiting for this to happen. Random Pal is. You probably guessed it. At it again. I happened to notice this gem last night. And uh, I gotta tell you, this, uh, this description here is solid gold. Have you ever found yourself awake at night, unable to sleep? with a thousand different thoughts passing through your mind, and one of them is, why does Baron Zaya, the queen, look like she's dressed in a trash bag and as if she got a cheap homemade haircut from her mom? Well, that definitely happened to me, and I decided to do, I had to do something about it. Hey, Santa, what's up, my man? I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Thanks for popping in. Um, I gotta say, I agree with Random Bale. I never uh, lay woke at night thinking about it, but I mean, since you mentioned it, you know, let's just go up here, and I must concur with the sub with the title here, Baron Zaya looking like an idiot. I mean, let's face it, when you think of the NPCs in the game, <laughs> all right, <laughs> fix that trash bag. Uh, all right, uh, when you look at her in the game, though, she's not really discernible from like any other. NPC that's got like a fancy robe on, you know, like really. And so Random Pal just has like an intuition for lore friendliness. Like I'm pretty sure they're secretly on the staff of the game because, I mean, you look at something like this and it's like, oh, perfect, you know. This is this is what you want. This is definitely what you want. So I went ahead and threw that in. That was like a, you know, I'm trying to like stop throwing new things into 6.x Random Pal has just achieved modding Chim, Gonzo says. Yeah, I mean, like, look at this. Like, you're laying awake at night, and you, like, are divinely inspired by brilliant design ideas like this. There are other options, um, you know, uh, worthy outfit, but that, yeah, ridiculous haircut. I mean, it is, like, now that you mention it, kind of a bargain bin haircut, if you ask me. Um, this one's a bit better. Like, that's a bit of a, you know, the snooty haircut, possibly. You know, I would expect, like, an evil stepmother, Disney evil stepmother, to have that kind of a hairdo. Something like that, but really, like, you know, if you're going to change the queen, you got to go all the way. This is the real deal, I agree. So, yeah, I <laughs> wanted to take a minute and call this one out as being worthy of checking out, and if you're following along for updates, that's going to be in there for sure. Number three option is, in my opinion, the easy choice. Okay, now, the burning question is, did my hideous hack of hacks work? Oh, no, it didn't. Hudrak says, the thing I like about this one is that it doesn't fall for the babe trope where every single important NPC ends up being represented by as something out of an Elvin Victoria's Secrets model. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's tasteful. And that's what I was talking about, Random Pal's divine design sense. Um, it's easy to go off the deep end, you know. And something I'm finding out myself as I design my own mod you got to rein it in sometimes. Even your bright ideas are not that bright. All right, well, this is no good. <clears throat> did this even happen? I mean, surely it did. It just didn't do what I hoped it would do, clearly. That's fine. We'll just get a little bit of noise here. If it says test. Which is going to take a minute to happen. So we'll go back over here. While it's chugging. Uh, and this. Pretty good drawing. Uh, props to uh, Fibelin. This is. You know. 
as I said, it's something when you play the game, maybe everybody has noticed kind of how, you know, basic this NPC looks. Uh, so it's good to, good to have a look at that. Good to have an option that's as good as this. What else do we got on the list while we're... Oh, uh, yeah, my Caldera Mine Expanded. Oh. I gotta say, that's a bit of a... That's gonna be a bit of a tough one. Um, and we got some time. Probably 20 minutes before I wanted to start looking at new stuff. You know, we could open that one up in the CS. Much like we did with Caldera Priory. And, and see if we can find what's wrong. I, I think I would like to do that. We'll time box this current little hack expedition to basically right now. And uh, and I'll, I'll revisit it later after I cut the grass and uh, in real life, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, oh yeah, and I do want to do this before we do the lineup assembly look too, uh, for the benefit of Herdraxon and those of you who are not familiar with CS hacking. This is going to be a particular uh, hideous one. Oh, actually. Sorry, I'm forgetting we had a little chat with Zach about that a moment ago, and it sounds like we can luify that, so maybe we won't actually. Maybe I'll do the CS stuff just for the edification of folks, and um, and then we can kind of talk about a Lua approach. Because, um, yeah, we don't want to do needless manual patching that is tedious and annoying if we don't have to. All right. Uh, let's close you. And uh, you'll note that I didn't get my output. So uh, that tells me at least one thing. And uh, it's, uh, you know, this is a, something I should have noticed right then and there. We're not dealing with strings here. I gave it a st uh, testing for a string. Would have never happened. <sighs> This is why using Teal, as uh, Erm joined us yesterday and mentioned Teal, using Teal for OpenMW Lua scripts would be pretty neat to have like the explicit typing um, in your code to prevent silly issues like this. And if you're not a coder, basically I tried to compare a number to like a not number of string, you know. Um, and obviously that doesn't, you know, do anything. But in Py Python is totally okay with it because it is uh, uses something that we call duck typing. And so does Lua. We don't have to sit here and say this is a string and this is a, you know, if we look at a. If we look at the code for OpenMW Validator, which is Go, we got types everywhere. The compiler's got to know what everything is. We've got a this, a map of a this and a that, and then everything is a type. But that means that when I'm writing the code, you know, I have a lot of really instant feedback about things from my tooling, um, and it's really good. And and also, everything is just much faster. You, you'll, you'll note that when I type something here, I'm getting way faster feedback versus uh, when I type something up here in my Python, and then it's got to kind of like, you know, gasm for a minute and uh, and figure out what the heck it was that I needed. So, Afain says, I'm not familiar with teal. Is that some kind of static type infer for Lua? Yeah, more or less. And it's by um, an amazing individual, the guy who made HTOP, if you're familiar with HTOP. But he's also like a major player in the Lua community. Uh, and, and many other people. It's not just one individual. But yeah, teal is a, a typed dialect of Lua. And um, maybe they got a... Let's hit the tutorial up and just take a really quick look. Da, 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 da. So yeah, it, it, it looks pretty similar to typed Python, if you've ever seen that, which... In my opinion, typed Python can look kind of hideous too. There we go. There we go. Typed Python ends up looking just way too busy, and it's like, at that point, it's like, why are you even using Python? You gotta put types in there. Great, now you got types, but you still have, you know, dynamic performance, um... I don't know. It depends on, you know, how married you are to Python, I suppose. Uh, so anyway, though, you know, we are obviously married to Lua for OpenMW. Boom! There we go. Fixered it. To quote my man, Vladi. <laughs> A guy I used to work with, he would say, I fixered it. All right. That's great. 
Um, so yeah, Teal, one of these days, Erm, who, was joined, who joined us yesterday, added Teal-type uh, stuff to open MW Lua some time ago, and uh, I kind of like made a to-do item to look at it, and then I kind of took a hiatus from the whole community, and here we are. I haven't looked at it yet, so some, one of these days, you know, maybe um, it would be cool to update a small mod like Action Camera Swap with types and, and go from there, you know, so. All right, well, let's remove this garbage. And so, coming back around to this. Little reminder for future me, or future anybody else who dares to look into the depths of this terrible, terrible code. All right. Very glad to have that one fixed. That was a bit of a doozy in my opinion. Okay, so while we're here, I'm very tempted. Yeah, we got a little time. I'm very tempted to go in there and also try to fix the Caldera Mine issue. Excuse me. Woo. All right. Uh, let's see here. DD Co. All right. Well, hold up. This is something we've already fixed. And I made it, I was a big dumb last night when I was chatting with this fella on Discord and I didn't check the beta website. And so we've actually already fixed this. Cool. I said to myself, man, this one came up recently. Well, we, we fixed it. That's why. And we had been doing such a regular cadence of releases every week. We, uh, we slacked on five. Well, we, by we, I mean me. So awesome. This is another one we get to just say is done. I love that. Boom, boom, done. All right. First up, let's go ahead and do this. We're going to open up both of these mods in the CS, and I'm going to just describe sort of what's wrong and how you might fix it manually. <laughs> Again, with this one, Zach has some magical idea that we can do it with Lua, and I don't doubt that we could. Um, maybe we can like detect collisions or something sexy like that. But in any case, it's a neat look at how to use the CS, and I love OpenMWCS, so I'm always down to fire it up. Let's do it. Uh, let's make sure our configuration is right, though. Oh, boy. I am ill-prepared. And another thing that we need to get done that I'm probably going to do after the stream, and I'll work with Gonzo uh, on the review process for this, but we need to fix the load order for 5.7. I think that's pretty important. Uh, make sure we mloxify all that stuff. All right. This is kind of my Skunk Works configuration, so don't mind all the junk in here. It's my minimal performance setup, but it's also what I use to, uh, you know, work on stuff. Did I... Mark. I swear I thought I loaded this up. Hmm, okay, well, I didn't. We'll just uh, add it in. This one's going to want to go down a bit more, I think. And I'm not, I don't think we need to merge here. At the risk of potatoifying the stream, I'm going to do it though. Should be a real quick merge. No, oh. must remove Delta plugin from here. Fire it up. I can't remember the exact cell name. 
So we're just going to get in-game and COC there. No Zach Utils at the moment, sorry, but I will be representing. Hold up, hold up. We'll be representing. I want to fool around with it a little bit more off-stream. But I've been getting some really great feedback about it from her drags. So stoked to try some of that stuff. It's going to make really, you know, easy work of some tedious stuff like switching around and command hotkeys. Let's, uh, plaza. Yeah. Plaza. Or Temple Courtyard. That's where we're, I'm sorry. Big derp. Okie doke. And so I definitely noticed some, some stuff like... Like this. Just, um, where is it? No, not right there. There's quite a few just like... Plants that are just growing on... And I thought there was one back here. But this one looks fine. You know, just plants that are growing out of rocks and things that really look out of place. You know, it was probably with Epic Plants, it looked a little bit different on Total total Overhaul. This actually looks okay. But with Total Overhaul, there were some obvious overlaps. So that, again, it could be because of the meshes that we got there. So anyway, let's load up the Let's load up our friend OpenMWCS and take a look. Walk in the park. Good. And where is... Oh. <laughs> Maybe you already figured it out. But why I didn't see any conflicts was because there was nothing there to conflict. Let's try that again, shall we? <sighs> Okie doke. Now. <laughs> I'm like, I swear it was broken. Obviously. Yeah, here we go. The cell is much more busy. Clearly we were missing out here. And we don't need to probably fly all the way over here, but this is just where I remember seeing obvious. Yeah, just look at this. Like, oof, you know? And so, this is where I like to take a step back. Yeah, clearly you got the flower growing in the rock and things like this. Like, it, you just... It's going to be a tedious process of kind of like trying to look and see what's overlapping. And perhaps with Lua, we can simply say, well, what's overlapping, you know, collision wise um, and sort of do what we want to do there. Turn down my Morrowind volume a little bit. Um, but if we weren't doing it that way, you know, you would have to kind of tediously look around, visually inspect things. You'd have to figure out which object is the one you want to, you know, uh, change. I would change it to a invisible mesh probably rather than delete it. But yeah, so so anyway, let's look at that. And actually, I goofed. You really want to use a 0 0.49 build of the CS. I would argue you want to do that of the engine too. Um, but certainly with the CS, you want to do that because there's just a lot of really nice features that are absent from 0 0.48, 0 .48 just because they were added after the fact, you know, so. And you you certainly want them. Did I? Where is Immersive Mournhold? Am I just... Did I goof again? No, no, there, oh, I did goof, I did. I have my... My little workflow house of cards that fell. There we go. Uh, 
And so, again, you know, we're not really going to proceed doing it this way. There's probably a better way to do it with code that is less tedious, more automatic. Always a good thing. But if you were proceeding with this, you'd select cells and you'd filter by temple courtyard. And the workflow would consist of kind of a multi-part approach. You would, on one hand, and so I'm not loading the right uh, content files. That's why we're getting the yellow markers. But on one hand, you would have the scene open like this. And you'd be looking for overlappers. Stuff like this. And then on the other hand, this is where it would be really handy if you have multiple displays, lots of screen real estate, because on the other hand, you need to have your instances open, and you need to say something like, and there we go, chugging a little bit. So, chugging a little bit. Mourn, hold, temple, court, yard. There we go. Everything in this cell. And then, I don't know what I would do. Maybe somebody knows a better way who's more experienced with the CS. But then what I would do is you mouse over that thing right there that's overlapping. It says Flora Grass 06. You sort by object ID, and then you come down here, and then you're going to see probably... Uh, I mean, just looking here, we have almost 3,000 records in this cell alone. So, I mean, this is why you don't want to do it by hand. You know, Herjax, I wasn't kidding when I said this was going to be tedious. Flora grass. Uh, look at all those lily pads. I mean, I love lily pads. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. And here we go. So, 06. Like, this is just probably like over 100 of them. But then you would delete them maybe one at a time and see which one is the one that you want, you know, or, or do whatever process of elimination this is the kind of the least fun kind of thing you could do, I think, in my opinion. There's just lots of work, very little return. And then, I, and then I kind of want to take a step back and ask myself, these are obviously two mods with pretty conflicting visions. And it's like, do we want to butcher one or the other to make them work together? You know, and this is where I question if they really work very well together at all. You know, and so... Uh, <laughs> sorting, uh, if Fane says, sort, yeah, sorting this out manually looks like a good time on a rainy Saturday. Perhaps, perhaps. Um, but as I was saying, you know, I do question if these are just destined to not work together, you know, like as much as I want to have, um, as much as I want to have all the beautiful things and I love Seeloff's work, it's just like, I don't really want to butcher their vision, you know, by, or random pals vision by deleting this or that, you know, and I get, I get conflicted about these kind of changes. Honestly, on one hand, I want as much content as possible. Herdrak says, yeah, I think we can stay as we are in drop sea loss version. Yeah. I think I, that's kind of what I was leaning towards. I definitely wanted your folks's input on it. But, um, like I said, cool it is it, as it is to just have everything, every mod under the sun, every mod that Todd will allow. Um, Sometimes we've got to take a step back and ask ourselves, you know, uh, is this really what we want? And I think in this case, uh, you know, with respect to the original offers, I don't, authors, I don't think we should do this. So, cool. Look at that. All right. Uh, yeah, so we still have a little bit of time before I really wanted to jump into the preview of 6.x, the lineup assembly. So let's take a quick look now at Caldera Mine Expanded. Maybe there's something, like, really easy that the verify process could fix, you know, so... Again, we'll jump back into my minimal configuration here and load it up. All right. In we go. Herdrex, is there a link with the issue description so I can try to reproduce it? Uh, if you mean the Caldera Mine, no, there isn't presently, but you should be able to go into the mod comments. and I didn't check yet, but apparently there are people talking about this in the comments on the Nexus. So if you want to take a peek in there and see if there's potentially useful comments relevant uh that would be excellent thank you sir appreciate it 
All right, now, in the meantime, let's take a look. Ooh, and you know what? I think it's that time for me to sit down. It's lower the desk a clock. Also, the sun seems to kind of be going away on us. It's getting dark. All right. Uh, I'll do this and then lower my desk. Pardon me for a moment. set this yesterday but let's just make sure reports ignore base records nice gosh that was a good was that you a fan i think that was you good tip on that that is great all right mm, file verify here we go in my opinion this is nothing serious seems like a lot of modders, though, expect play sound to work in a way that it does not. And the show thing here doesn't work. Pick that up from, uh, ah, a fan says, I picked that up from one of the old OpenCS release videos a week ago. Huh, man, so I should have just asked Atualpa. Huh, all right. Next time I talk to him, I'm going to... I'm gonna be like, we need to have, we need to get Atualpa on here for our OpenMWCS stream because he's like, you know, the godfather practically of the CS. He and Nelson and and Lamut. Cool, that's awesome. Then, all right. And I assume it was Atualpa that covered it. He was the man, Mister OpenMW, for many years before I showed up. And now he's one. He's my bestie. I think. Oh, okay. Forty. It wasn't forty six because that was my first video, so it must have been forty five. Uh Cool. All right. Yeah, Atuelpa is my bestie. I love him. Yeah, this is none of this, so let's just for the sake of completion, you know, let's pull up the script that it's complaining about. Bomb Escape, for example. And again, helpfully, OpenMWCS can tell you when you got an error here, and it points to line 13. Play sound. Ex straight explicit resonance. Okay, yeah. So so they want play sound 3D, probably. Yeah, this is like the same thing. It seems like a lot of modders don't exactly know the difference between play sound and, and the variance. To be perfectly fair, I would need to look it up every time. You know, look at the ancient MW script documentation. I just can't wait till we can do this with Lua. I need a Lua music mod so bad. Um... Just want to throw that out there in case Zach is still with us. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, nothing really obviously wrong here. Um, hopefully, her address can find something in the comments that will help us in our investigation. But as far as I'm concerned, that investigation is basically over right now because, yeah, we don't have much to go on. The, these warnings are just that. They're warnings. Play The sound is not going to play exactly maybe as they think. That's the worst that's going to happen unless there is... Unless there's something where it depends on the sound playing, ending in a certain way or something. Maybe there's some Todd wizardry that I don't, you know, imagine could happen here that has happened. But, yeah. Um, so, good, you know. It's good that we didn't find anything. But also, oh, you know, nothing that we can really knock out easily. So, all right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and we're shelving that for now gonna check it off and uh gonna go ahead and get the website deploy underway right now oh okay interesting her, her, her jack's here with a comment thank you so much for starters a bit of a misunderstanding on the comment section a user linking total overhauls old fix for Caldera Expanded, which I got from Lucavar on Discord. I believe they posted it there. Uh, asking if the version that made the patch itself obsolete includes the fixes. Hmm. Yeah. All right. 
Hmm, take the link down. Okay, yeah. So let's just open that up. This one. Yeah. Yeah, this one. All right, yeah. Let's fix that right now. And uh, I'm not a fan of taking links down because I don't like to create link rot. What we're going to do is we're going to have it redirect. We'll have it redirect to the real mod. And I will uh, remove the file from my file server. All right. Uh, legacy. Yep. All right. Let's... This is the mod we're moving. The mod we're pointing it to. Preserve old mod names. Here we go. I have these kind of categorized in a weird way, so I want to keep that going. Mods. There we go. Quite a few of these over the years have come up. Good call out there, by the way, Herdrex, and good find there. This will probably make the authors of this mod less annoyed with me. Because to be fair, I would be kind of annoyed. Like, really, guy? What are you doing? I'll probably never use this named URL, but might as well do it. And then to complement this, we're going to actually delete the data. Uh, thank you, Herdrex. I defer to your best judgment. Because given its recent comment, the user shouldn't have any issues. The updated Caldera expansion page on TO is very clear in its instructions. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Um... This is very little effort for us to do, so we're just going to go ahead and take that extra step and do it. All right, uh, data. This is a uh, fixes. I'm not going to totally delete it. I'm going to keep it here. Comment it out for historical purposes. Um, and then we'll need to data. Uh -huh. Maybe eventually I'll be like, why did I do that and just delete it? But for now, I feel like I want to keep it just because. And it's forever going to be in the git commit history, so really I'm just being a fool, but let me. Let's recrunch the data and make sure this redirect works. Uh, and then, yeah, I suppose we'll have to, um, you know, we'll have to, I guess, dig into that mod at a, at a later time, a little bit deeper and see, like, how can we... How can we set up a test script to put us, you know, wherever we need to be in the mod to properly test it, you know, and see the problem happen? <clears throat> oh, did I even do that deploy? No, not yet. Let's make sure that our redirect works before I do that deploy. Confirm that work by other users as well. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Herdrex says, apparently there's already a workaround from our Discord channel shared on the page. Confirm that work by other users as well. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Good find. Thank you for that, Herdrex. We'll uh, follow up on that after the stream then, and we'll make sure that we have all the right details for people there. 
And so, yeah, my so my intention for this sort of exercise here is we're going to look at uh, my well while the database is chugging and we can check our work afterwards. We'll look at my current setup. We'll see what I got that's new. And just kind of, we'll notate it in my list here, and then eventually we'll make an issue on GitLab, and we'll formally add things there, uh, a checklist, you know, and we can check things off as we proceed through the release. So, okay. So what I want to see here is this takes me to the real mod. There you go. I'm happy with that, and I think that's a fair approach. The URL isn't gone. There's no link rot. The sitemap will be updated accordingly because the mod data is removed from the database. Um, search engines won't index it anymore. Hopefully less confusion caused by me. That's a motorcycle. I don't know if you folks can hear that. You heard it. All right. Good. I always wonder. <laughs> I live kind of by a, like an old man bar that bikers like to go to. And so... Okay, Herdrex, the rest of it concerning Caldera Mod, I'll have to tell you off screen, not PG 13, some of what's going on in there. <laughs> All right, good old Nexus time. That's cool. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. That's a mod I really want to keep, you know, because it's cool. There's cool stuff there, not just the aesthetic changes. Yeah, the uh, Smalio, they do poker draw runs for Misericordia sick kids riding around for charity. Okay. Yes, yeah, so anyways, I'm going to go ahead and I'll walk and then let's delete this from here. Get that out just to get that out of the diff walk. All right. Let's Let's begin. So, uh, the first things first. This is what we just dealt with. And this would be swapping out the uh, area effect arrows. And this is a change that's going in actually before 6.x. So, we don't really need to talk about it much. Container ownership from Half 11's miscellaneous mods is getting removed. And actually. We have, no, I don't have it bookmarked. Okay, that's fine. Let's see here. Container, container ownership nexus. This highly impressive project. No, no, no. Yes. No, this isn't it. Ownership overhaul. There we go. Nexus, you there? There we go. This is the one I wanted. Okay, great. So this is a bit more of a comprehensive approach at what Half-11 was doing with that mod. Um, supersedes it. Does basically the same thing. Makes owned outright many containers that container ownership makes faction owned. No more free light sources. Wow, okay, cool. Yeah, so in my opinion, this just fits along with kind of the ethos of what we're doing with Total Overhaul. We're, you know, making some attempt to, to nerf the game and, you know, in various ways that make sense. That are role play friendly, and I think this fits really well, right? You don't want to just stroll into Balmora and it's like, all right, 
literally every container outside for the taking, you know. I mean, you could become filthy rich within, you know, 15 minutes of diligent container pillaging and nobody will bat an eyelash at you. Now, with this one, you can still do that. You just got to, you know, get your sneak on. Um, so it's not quite as straightforward, not quite as cheaty, you know. Um, so I feel like, yeah, this good first edition here. Let's line up assembly. Uh, we're calling this ownership overhaul. All right. One down. Okay. Uh, another one by my good buddy, Poodle Sandwich. FMI Sane Ordinators. Got some star wind going on here. I don't know if you folks can hear that all at all. Starwind OST. Sane Ordinators makes it so Ordinators will not ki kill you for wearing Indoril armor once you have been named Nerevarin by Vivek, or if you are Master Patriarch of the Temple. This makes sense, and also fits with kind of the goals of the total overhaul. Herdrax, okay, we'll see ya. This fits with kind of the goals that I have for the, you know, s the setup. We want to make things consistent, right? They shouldn't get mad at you if you're their hero. You should be okay for you to wear this. Um, there is still a, a reaction here that I think makes good sense. You'll get a disp disposition drop, force goodbye. Like, they're not happy. Like, I think this is well thought out approach. Solves the problem in a very thoughtful way. So this getting added for sure... A bit of a more of a small touch, but a good one to round out the experience. All right, next up, remove negative lights for OpenMW. This one may actually not make it on the list. I'm a little conflicted because this is going to be a 0 0.49 only item. And actually, a lot of folks out there don't like using dev builds, which is understandable. You sign up for a certain amount of potentially bug hunting, you know, when you do dev builds. And not everybody really wants that, and I appreciate that. I can respect that. You want to just play the game. Um, so it's like a, a balance between, you know, enjoying the game, but also having new goodies and stuff. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll come up with a way to have dev build only stuff. Or maybe I can place this in a dev build only section of the mod list, you know, and people can kind of decide for themselves if they want to go that route. Um, got the chorus <laughs> speaking up a little bit here. Nerevar Rising. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. this is But this is a great one. We have the, the prior approaches to this are ESP based. Um, you know, this uses the Lua approach and just nukes them all from orbit. You don't have any. And if you're not aware of why you don't want negative lights, this right here is a negative light. I mean, there's just no reason for that to be there. I'm really puzzled about, like, the choices of the usage of this in the design of Morrowind. I'm not really sure why they did it. And especially, this this is a good example because this makes no sense right here. So we want this. I believe we have the um, ESP-based approach on the list now. And if we don't, we might say use that instead of this one for people on 0 0.48. So it's going on It's going on the list with the note then. Yeah, I think that's how we'll handle it. We'll say it's an, al it's an alternative if you're using the dev build. Cool. Okay. 
All right, so the next group of changes is actually shuffling stuff around. And you can see here, I kind of just wrote a question mark because I'm not really sure. I'm not still not exactly sure what to do with this. Um, some of these are probably ordered wrong, and I'm going to need to use the validator to see kind of where they fall in the loadout. But effectively, we have this one entering the scene. If Nexus ever decides to load. There we go. Oh, boy. We got this one arriving on the scene. And with 154 options, it replaces some of the existing normal maps we have. So we have uh, Greg079 normal maps we're currently recommending folks use. We have normal maps for Morrowind we're also recommending folks use. And then we have... Normal maps for Morrowind, Tamriel Rebuilt, OAAB, SHOTN, Sturk, and other mods. Also, I don't know if that's actually on the list or if this is one I just threw in my personal setup for experimentation. But anyway, we I had all these other offerings that were pre-existing for normal maps. And I wanted to make sure that I used the ones from this instead of them. So a quick brute force way to do that was to eject them from their prior place in the load order which existed down here in the texture pack section I could probably move them back down here honestly and just put it right here oh uh, no no actually I couldn't no because yeah as you can see here we're already using some of these you know um, so yeah that exactly touches on why I moved them up here I just kind of wanted to get them out of the way of all the things from normal maps for everything and then deal with anything that we were kind of lacking later um, and one thing that I think, all right, Herjax, welcome back, my man. Just looking at kind of the new uh, offerings we're going to have for normal maps and talking about what we're doing with the old normal maps that we previously recommended to people. And this is something we're going to have to play around with a little bit. Quick and dirty fix that I did was to put all the old normal map packs earlier in the load order, just get them out of the way. And then you can see here we got normal maps for everything already in the mix here. TRPC, SHOTN, OAAB data, you know, already in the mix. Oop. Tomb of the Snow Prince, DR data, which actually is going to come out. I got to remove that. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to go with the manufacturer's uh, Kogarun mod just yet. So this one's coming out. But I digress. I mean, we can see here, we look at, I've got 28 usages here in my config. And let's just take a really quick look at everything that they're giving us here. Um, because out of 154 packages, I need to take another look. Wouldn't mind a buddy check if you guys are feeling motivated and want to look through here. Um, once we have identified what I've got, of course, don't want to duplicate my work. But um, 28 different things we're using here. Let's see, Epic Plants, Ferrum Comberry Bush, Ferrum Fire Fern. Excellent Grey's Lands Acacia. Excellent mod. Vanilla Friendly West Gash Tree Replacer. Ramiras Escadian Isles Trees 2. New Ilanibi. Unique Items Compilation. OAAB Grey's Lands. Blighted Animals Retexture. Unique Cave Rats 2.0 HD. Another Poodle Sandwich mod there. Danae's Mods, which is just all in one. Probably lots of stuff there that we don't need exactly, but... I just dumped it in there right after uh, Friends and Foes and Wares and all that. BCOM, of course. Necrom Architectoria. OAAB Telmora. Corpusarium Experience. I ended up commenting out. Don't recall why. Let's uncomment it real quick and see. Whoop, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't try this at home, folks. Oh, my goodness. That's what happens when you fat finger. All right. Um, oh, yeah. Let's get that deploy going. I expect this validation to fail. Oh, no, it doesn't. Cool. Okay. Corpusarium experience. Awesome mod, by the way. If you haven't actually gotten to that point, that's another brilliant one. Better Close, Ramiro's Falendron, 
Umbra Blade Master, Secrets of the Crystal City, Uvirus Legacy, Astrologian's Guild, Dunmer Lantern's Replacer, and that's it. So, quite a nice offering, and I'm just going to generalize for now, and I'll probably off-stream make individual bullets under this one saying, you know, which packages we're using and then we can go from there and, and buddy check me and stuff. For now, I'm just going to put a single item for this one. And I'll note that it also has Starwind normal maps, which look pretty awesome too, you know. So, if you're into Starwind, this is an option for you as well. All right. So, moving on. No. Here we go. All right. Now we're back to it. Okay. Um, yeah, we talked about this a little bit yesterday. There is a Project Atlas Git repo on GitHub. And they have quite a newer offering here and some of the stuff that I have inherited here or, or started to use um, let's see here there is a here we get it here it is here's the main one that's that's good and concerns us is uh, improved lights for all shaders patch Get a little bit of a performance helper right there. I'm sure those lights aren't really killing scenes, but, uh, you know, it's good to... It's good to have every little bit of help we can get, especially when it's there's no, you know, visual clarity loss. So, yeah. Uh, we'll go ahead and put this on here. Project Atlas GitHub... And I will echo what I said yesterday, which is I'm a little kind of uh, about sending people to GitHub. So the download link will probably be a direct link to the zip that downloads master. This is a this is an interesting one. Somebody on Discord asked me. How come you're using fix those bastard rope fences and not jammings off? Well, to recap the answer I gave them, I didn't know about jammings off. And uh, frankly, just to really quick talk about the difference between these two. Jammings off, moral and nexus. Fix those bastard rope fences focuses specifically on the rope fences, which apparently have a janky mesh. Go figure, huh? Jammings off, though, however affects actor hitboxes. And you'll note now the hitboxes. So so what they tried to do here, you can see, they tried to like include the full actor in the hitbox, which I guess makes sense. But like having this like corner right here is a little silly, right? Like <laughs> the space above your shoulder is gonna collide on something, you know, and it's it's, it's a little awkward. And so what they've done here is they've reduced it big time. And you still have a little bit of that awkward shoulder thing going on, but a lot less so. A lot, lot less so. Um, everybody's favorite house of earthly delights before and after. Um, ooh, yikes. <laughs> Whoops. Didn't really know that was going to include the nudies there. Apologies. So yeah, this is a, a definitely a better take on that, though, in my opinion, because we're not just fixing like one mesh that that is janky for the player. We're actually fishing, fixing the collision box, and uh, I've played with this quite a bit, and it's good. It's really good. Um, <laughs> yeah, Gonzo. Whoops, <laughs> totally didn't know they had the nudies there. Yikes. Um, I digress though. So this one getting added for sure, uh, and replacing the bastard rope fence. Actually, gonna note when something is replacing something else. Um, just to make the whole record keeping process a little easier, we're gonna eventually 
move all this into GitLab, but I want to rough draft it here. We should have known we were in trouble when the House of Earthly Delights came up. <laughs> Oops. All right. Yeah, let's do a little bit of a tab garbage collection. If this is not your first stream, you know that I'm a bit of a tab janitor. <laughs> all right. Moving on. So, yeah, this one's just going to pop up all over the place. Normal maps for everything. Shows up 28 times, as we indicated. Um, a lot of good stuff here. Oh, yeah. This is this is something I wanted to call out though. There's nothing I can really do about this cuz I lack, you know, the modeling expertise, but what we have here is a package in OAAB data for animated containers. And it is of course not using the special animation capabilities that OpenMW has. And I wonder I don't doubt it's possible to make these use that. I just it's beyond my capability and skill, but I wonder if somebody out there can do it. And let's uh just just for containers animated. There we go. Objects and clutter. Just for completion's sake. What I'm talking about is stuff like these, these uh, .kf files. Um, and this is a format for animations that OpenMW supports. And this is a special OpenMW exclusive thing. So that's why I'm not really surprised that we don't see it in OAAB data, but I don't see any reason why we couldn't if somebody were to contribute the work, you know. Um, I would love to work on it if I only knew how to do it. <laughs> so that's something I just want to put out there. Not really related to our discussion of 6.x, but yeah, something just that just would be sweet, right? To have animations on those OAAB containers, which we are currently lacking. So, moving on. All right. Let's, uh, let's fold all this in, too, to kind of keep it fold, fold. All right. Yeah, we're folding this one, too. Fold it. Okay. Uh, DR data, I was adding as a dependency for uh, the Kogarun mod by the manufacturer 87. But there's a compatibility problem with that one and Rise of House Tovani, and I want to work with them to uh, make some changes necessary to the Kogarun mod to make maintaining that patch not a pain for me. Because as it is right now, I would have to redo it anytime he updates his Kogarun mod. That's not a thing that I want for either of us, so... Uh, we got Morrowind Enhanced Textures 6, which dropped while I was sort of on hiatus. And um, so I've thrown it into my setup. And I believe Normal Maps for Everything is made with that in mind. Um, I don't think we need to note that on the list, though. But uh, maybe we do. We'll go ahead and... We're going to just put a note here. I'm not going to link it, though. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so those of you hanging out in Discord will know Mono Exhibitor, who's been hanging out with us, and uh, they've actually created a patch collection. That's pretty good. There's a lot of good stuff in there. And among other things, we're going to be including... Many of these that you see I've downloaded will be including, but uh, specifically this one, upscaled journal and bookmark background replacement. I, yeah, you know, this is an easy one. I think that people can kind of go for if they want or not, you know, this or that replacer for this, but I think this one is really good. Um, and actually, check it. Let's just look at it right now. Because I got it loaded. I like it so much I put it as my minimal performance just because I didn't want to see the blurry vanilla texture. So yeah, here's the journal. Nice, you know, book looking thing. And then we got the 
the bookmark texture here. I don't know. I like it. I think it looks pretty good. So it's going on the list. Don't mind the blurry font. <laughs> Not the fault of the texture pack here of, uh, of Mono's texture. So, yeah, big thanks to Mono Exhibitor for doing that and sharing me the link. And that's going on the list. Brooms makes me remember about Danae's broom mod. We need to find that. Maybe it wasn't Danae that made it, but somebody made an MWSE mod with brooms and cobwebs. And we can do that with OpenMW Lewin now, I'm 99% sure. Good. All right. Cool. We'll fold this one in. Ah, yeah. I haven't actually integrated this one. However, another individual that many of you may know from Discord, Ferris, has also their own patch collection. Thank you and props to Ferris for all their work on OpenMW Lua and for these patches. Nexus, where are you? Come on. But I have I've downloaded one yeah, the various texture atlases. I haven't really integrated them yet. Um uh, Herjack says, OpenMW dev team is awesome. Just saying. They fixed the dialogue issue. Oh, awesome. Cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, Herjax had been dealing with uh, noticing a dialogue sorting issue. It turns out that only manifested in a 0 0.49 build. Report the issue. They fix it. Let's see here real quick. So when I'm looking for a change, this is what I like to do. I like to uh, go to my local copy of the code. And then we just look at the git log. Cool, did you, okay, so they must not have merged it just yet. Maybe they gave you a build, an MR build to try. But once the MR is merged, I'll build another app image and boom, we got the fix. So yeah, that's part of the process. Um, it's the it's the lovely world of helping build OpenMW, right? Because um, we as users are in the really unique position to find things like this. You know, that the developers cannot find Evil Eye or whoever made the change that broke this probably didn't imagine that what they did was going to break it, you know. And that's just how software development works. Um, so, yeah, that's really neat. I'm so glad that we got to a conclusion on that so quickly, like less than 12 hours, really. And um, so definitely a fun mystery hunt for you, I'm sure. <laughs> awesome. Glad to hear that. Moving on. All right. Oh, I'm excited about this next one. But uh, let's quick put a spot in here for Ferris's Atlas patches. I got to look at these. If one of you guys wants to uh, get the jump on that, please feel free. But otherwise, expect to find some of these Atlases on the list as well. And again, thank you and props to Ferris. Now, this next one I'm pretty pumped about. And uh, I looked at a few options here. And maybe we can talk about this right now. And we can look at the options. But we have three different choices for the Ministry of Truth here. We have Meteorite Ministry Nexus Mon. The one that we know and love. And it's a great mod, if it, even if it is a little dirty. It's the one we're using now on the list. Classic. It's great. We also have... This one. I don't think that's the one I want. Nexus is just chugging today. I don't know. It's up there. Could also be my crap internet, though. Okay, yeah, this is not the one I wanted. This is the one that we're going with, but it's not the one I wanted to show. 
Come on, little buddy. There you go. 88 user files. Wow. <laughs> Random pal. Good pal. So I looked at this one first. Bear Dow. And this is the model that they use in Moral Oblivion. And it looks pretty good. I do like it better than Meteorite Ministry. Nexus. What is... Is anybody else having problems loading Nexus right now? Or is it just my region of the world? Kind of annoying. All right. Um, yeah, so, you know... Um, stays uh, exterior-wise. Okay, Herdrax, thank you for confirming. Nexus having a bad day. Exterior, it stays pretty close to the original here. Um... It's good. Snappy over there. Oh, okay, wow. Okay, so yeah, it may, might be regional for me. I'm in the Midwest, US, USA, so. You know, this is good. I tried it in-game, flew around it, and it, it, you know, it was not bad. But then I saw this one. Nope, there it goes. Okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> so yeah, they're probably just having a day. This one makes some pretty nice exterior changes but also makes changes to the interior that I think are, I mean, <laughs> you got a little torture chamber in here. <laughs> I loved it. I mean, I just really loved it. And uh, I thought this is the one. This is replacing Meteorite Ministry on the lists. Just excellent work by, uh, you know, Enwaz and Mushroom's team. Love it. And so, yeah, this is replacing the Meteorite Ministry. I will say I do miss having it kind of higher up, which was an option in the Meteorite Ministry. Um, it would be a trivial patch in the in OpenMWCS. Select all the things, raise it up however you know um, you want it, and yeah. So I'm gonna live with it the way it is, though. We're all good. All right. Aha, okay. Hopefully we still got Zach with us. If not, uh, thank you, Zach, for working with me on this. This is the thing that I was doing uh, last week. We were implementing an OpenMW Lua version of the MWSC Lua for Melchior Dark's Dwemer Lightning Rods. Let's go ahead and pull that up. Here we go. And so this mod, when Nexus finally decides to load it, comes with two packages. One for MWSE Lua folks that automatically replaces the vanilla I've been off and on and looks awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Zach. Cool, man. <laughs> Glad you're still here. Um, so, so this one automatically replaces... At activation, which means on activate is when you're walking around and you load the cell into the active grid. Activation. And so what we do is the lightning rod models you got here and the vanilla ones are basically identical with the exception of the like the center point. There's like a different offset form, so you got to massage it a little bit. Um, so yeah, with the help of Zach and uh, Peter and probably Erm and others, we got this one here. Let's just, because uh, it's such a succinct little section of codes. I just got a code. I got I to gotta show it off. And unfortunately, though, we're kind of at the mercy of an OpenMW bug at the moment. And thank you to any old name three for chiming into the conversation and confirming that it is in fact a bug. But basically when we spawn these stacks in and you unload them, they don't have any LOD, no distant uh, version. So it's not really production ready yet, but I'm playing with it nonetheless. And it, it works. It's great. Um, we got the lightning and, you know, I took the liberty of even putting in some some version checks, some some we can with 0.49, we can look at the content file list, we can see what plugins are loaded. If somebody doesn't have OAAB data, which is required, I can fail and put a, a helpful message in the log. And yeah, I mean, this is the meat and potatoes right here. This is it, you know, fundamentally it's this right here, which is 
very succinct. I got a couple to do's here. The original MWSE uh, version of this does uh, check for certain interiors, for all interiors, I think, which we should do. And they also check to see if it's like one that is like not vertical enough. Like maybe there's some that are knocked down. Maybe lightning shouldn't strike those. I feel like maybe it should. Fane says, Nexus is difficult today. It took me 25 minutes to publish my super small mod. What's your super small mod? Please put a link in the chat and I'll take a look at it right here. Um, awesome. Yeah, well, I mean, not awesome, but it's good to have multiple people confirming it's not just me. Uh, so, yeah, again, uh, thank you, Zach. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my, uh, the Lua, Lua Wizard man. And uh, eventually, once we get that LOD issue sorted... I will uh, propose to Melchior Dark to include this in uh, the package for 0 0.49 users, and we can kind of have equal footing with the MWSC people on this, uh, which would be great. So yeah, this is going to be on the mod list, though, not just because of that. Um, Cool. Okay, little uh, segue here. Uh, Ifane's mod. Let's just take a quick look at what we got here. Pickpocket rebalance. Oh, cool. Stuff like this is always very welcome and very um, momentous, if I may say, because we're we're planning, you know, to update the mod list, the content of the mod lists. So this is the perfect time to kind of present this. So awesome! What do we got here? Makes pickpocketing useful by setting number one, setting the max success chance to one hundred percent. Previously, no matter how good you were, you could always fail a pickpocket test. All right, max success. Remember. 100% is a reasonable max success. But, you know, we're dealing with, like, you know, the will of Todd here and, and game development. So you got to understand something that makes a setting like that that makes sense may not exist. And number two, changing F pickpocket mod modifier from 03 to 005. This makes pickpocketing actually useful and allows you to steal valuable heavy items with enough sneak and luck. Cool. I mean... Do we have any? I have pickpocket rebalance. What is that? Might we be replacing it? Oh, you know what? I think this is a this is an old school one. Okay, this doesn't quite go as far as yours though, I don't think. We have a modifier change that's different from yours. Very similar. Yeah, very similar. But I think your values make a little bit more sense. Cool. Well, yeah, definitely worth a look. I don't typically pickpocket a lot, though. So, I mean, if any of you guys do a lot of pickpocketing. Oh, no. GMST contamination. Oh, no. Oh, no. And what's a shame about that is oftentimes when you have a mod... That is, you know, yeah, right. That's right. Okay, hi, brought this up to me, and I was going to message. Ah, this is really great timing. I will happily drop this for yours because it, you'll look here, and you cannot upload this. You cannot modify it without their permission. You cannot convert it, blah, blah, blah. So, like, if we cleaned this, we basically, you know, we really couldn't even re-upload it and share it. Um, So this is broken out of the box, unfortunately. Nice. Very thoughtful and very cool, Afane. Eh, Let's go ahead and put this on here. You're on the list. Thank you. That is the key. The GMST contamination was the key selling point for me because, um, yeah, I had OK High mention it to me. I don't actually say you should clean it on my website. My local copy is cleaned. Um, but, yeah, anyways, I kind of like your numbers a little bit more, too. It'll be interesting. Um, maybe I'll try actually pickpocketing a little bit more. I don't usually play as a sneaky character. I should do that. All right. Cool. Good timing. Really good timing. <laughs> thank you, Ifane, and well done. Um, and thank you for uh, also, you know, having your mod be not dirty. Track that one. Yeah, Gonzo goes nicely with my mission to improve thief gameplay. Hype. I'm very hyped about some of the ideas that you got flowing, so... And especially what with OpenMW Lua developing the way it is, you know, it looks like we're going to have, like, a lot of combat de-hard-coded in the near future. So that could make for some interesting 
sneaking combat opportunities, right? No kill runs could be made a little bit more fun. That kind of stuff. Gonzo, I made a big list, but I have no idea if I'm going to be able to achieve a lot of it. <laughs> hey, you know, well, you don't have to rush. I'm taking time with my enchant mod for sure. A fane, I'm also working on a stealth rebalance with Lua, waiting for 0 0.49 before publishing anything. Okay, okay. Very hype. Stealth rebalance. Um, I have a feeling my next character is going to be a sneaky character. Uh, Herdrax, as one of the trainee secretaries of Total Overhaul, is good to know the mod authors being brought in so we can get in touch with them if necessary. Yeah, yeah, it's it's totally cool uh, to have folks in here, you know. Um, I am a sneaky character. Hey, it's Catastrophe, my man, Jake. Thank you for hopping in. I'm glad you're here. We're just looking at cool new stuff. This process is going a little bit more slowly than I sort of anticipated, but I don't know. We actually have a pretty decent list here, um, and I'll probably continue building this off stream, but... Awesome. Hey, Fane, thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Um, all right, moving on. Lightning Rod. So, yeah, and if you haven't... So, oh, yeah, that's right. I uh, I wanted to explain why the Lightning Rods were not present on the list before. And basically, the reason for that is none of the Dwemer Ruins in Vanilla Morrowind exist in a place where you could see lightning. So, like, it would just be extra work for nothing. You would have to console it in and... To bury the lead a little bit down the list, we're adding some mods that actually put storms in the Ashlands, potentially. So you could actually potentially see them. So that's why they weren't there before. And also, we didn't have the ability to automatically make TR competitive. Because there are some TR Dwemer Ruins in places where you would reasonably expect to see lightning. Um, with the Lua-based approach, we can magically smooth them in there, massage it in there. And you could just experience this, which... If you haven't seen this in-game, it's just outstanding. In my opinion, anything MD does is pretty much solid gold, though. So, respect, MD. We love you. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Here we go. We looked at this one yesterday. This was a easy ad for me when I saw this one. And big props to Johannes for uh, calling it out. Reanimations. And I might actually take another quick look at this one right now because I'm loving it. Been playing uh, 6.x, beta testing it myself on my Steam Deck. And I'm just really liking these animations. They're good. Um, and yeah, again, we, you know, we took a quick look at it yesterday while we were testing out some of the magical animations. If there's an animation guru out there, we need you. We need you for this. We need you for the magical animations. We need you for the container animations. We need you. Ooh, okay, taking uh, just kind of, we had a little bit of stream chat here going on about sneaking rebalance, and a fane said that they're taking inspiration from this, or they're referring to this as a reference for uh, their mod. Okay, by Mort. Neat. I assume it's, yeah, MWSC Lua, okay. Neat, very, very neat. Hype. I am very hyped about this. This is cool. I feel like... A sneak in any Elder Scrolls game, even maybe including the Fallout games. I'm a huge, if you don't know, I'm a huge Fallout 3, New Vegas fan, Fallout 4 to a lesser degree. And I feel like the sneak in those games, too, is even kind of busted, you know, just. So some love to this aspect of gameplay is much, much, much appreciated. And I love you folks thinking about it. So awesome. Very excited to see something. Oh, so this is kind of cool. We have like a degrees there. That's really, really cool. Actually, on this note, um, the basic needs mod that recently came out for OpenMW Lua has a really cool UI where like the hungrier or the thirstier you get um, on the right-hand side here. Yeah, like the... I'm not into this kind of uh, survival kind of mod, really, but, like, I really loved the UI that he developed for this. It was really cool. So, um, yeah, just a little segue there. All right, so moving on to the good stuff we got here. Uh, reanimations. Let's go ahead and document that before I get too much more distracted. Very stoked, very stoked about this pickpocket rebalance. 
I'm gonna add that to my setup right now. One less dirty contaminated mod is good. All right, normal maps for everything coming up again and again. The gift that keeps giving, really, that one. Um, a lot of bang for your buck on it, but it's it's g great that we have everything separately, downloaded separately, but also, you know, it requires a little bit of careful thought. All right, moving on. We have done this already together in previous iterations of the stream, but we removed OAAB Golden Reads because it's now included included in OAAB Grazelands. So, as it, I think should have been. Um, Grove of Benabi, I just moved down, actually, in the list a little bit to, to group it with other things where I think it belongs more. Um, yeah, this is one that I added yesterday, actually. Uh, I forget where I saw this. In the description of some other mod. Let's go ahead and pull it up here. Mm. Not finding it in my history. Hmm. O A B hackle low. So this kind of makes um they almost look like palm trees. Where'd it go? Come on. They almost look like palm trees, but it's actually a really nice look. I actually really like it. And uh, I wandered around Grazelands a little bit yesterday while I was playing around on my Steam Deck, and uh, I loved it. There's like some really big, super large. <laughs> I don't even know how to describe them except for super large, but yeah. Uh, let's see. Heck. Here we go. This one right here. This doesn't really do them justice. But. They just fit in the Grazelands like they were there all along. They really do. And um, I instantly loved it. It's a shame this only has less than 40 downloads. I mean, wow. You know, so let's make the magic happen, shall we? Let's make it rain for this modder. And yeah, you know, if you want to get the jump on it, add this one to your setup. It's beautiful. It really is. And it goes great with MD's Thickle Low, which we have on the list already. Okay, moving on. Yeah, I loved that one. Okay. So this little chunk, it's just all normal maps stuff. Moved Grove, Grove of Benabi. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I just talked about that. But uh, we'll go ahead and Grove of... Just moved it down with the other landscape stuff. It felt like it, it belonged more with these. Um, so yeah, not a major change really. Not worth noting in here at least, I don't think. All right, this one. Oh, ooh, this is another great one from Random Pal. Let's pull it up. Yeah, this one was just. Oh man, <laughs> concept art, Molag Amor region, the Great Scathes, and so this is another case of um, the game that you see doesn't really reflect the game as it describes itself, right? In particular, the Molagamur region is described with sulfur pools. That'd be these yellow guys you see here. and Just with kind of a different character than what you actually see in the vanilla game. So, of course, Random Pal, in their traditional style, has gone in and just... It works. Yeah, here we go. Here's So here's... Uh, I think this is from Daggerfall, right? No, concept map. Morrowind. Okay. And yeah, you can see the great scathes here. We got like yellow lakes and stuff. Um, distinct. Very distinct. In the vanilla game, it's just like another boring part of the Ashlands that all looks the same. You know, you wouldn't know it from anywhere else. So I've been playing with this and I gotta say, totally love it. And uh, goes well with. This is already merged into BCOM and this one is another addition for 6.x. Slow attic transports. So, yeah. Uh, what can I say? If you haven't already scooped this one up, do. And it's getting added. Let's put it on there. J 
just really round out a region that is otherwise a little bit less memorable than other parts of the game, and we always appreciate that. So much love and props to Random Pal. Gonzo, those geysers are so cool to see and hear, right? These ones. I mean, I didn't even, even by the time I got in game, I forgot, you know, that it was something that was added. So I was just kind of walking around and just kind of, <laughs> you know, pleasantly surprised, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. These guys, these uh, slowed airships, make it happen, Zach. We need that airship. We need it. I was thinking, too, the airship should have a cool quest. Okay. Great scathes. Just another magnificent. This one. Herdrak shared this one with me. Mountain of Fear. Zach, did you see my GitLab for the airship? Ah, uh, I looked at it not since last week. I'll check it out after the stream, after I get some lunch. Uh which is going to be coming up soon here. Um, please feel free to relink me here or also in my Discord channel, though, please. And thank you so much. Um, Mountain of Fear. As I was just talking about with the Great Scathes, this is another aspect of the map that's kind of like, you know, ho-hum. It's like another, you know, if you blinked, you could miss it part of the map. And it turns Mount Cand into like an actual, you know, a pointy peak. And, uh, you know... I have mixed feelings about mods that try to make all of the mountains in Morrowind pointy. In particular, the Red Mountain mods that make it all like a grand. And, and those are awesome. And I love them. But it's not necessarily true that a volcano would be big and pointy, right? Like, actually, most volcanoes don't look like that. This goes back to a conversation we had in the OpenMW IRC channel years ago. Uh, we were talking about mountainous Red Mountain and how lore-friendly it is, right? Uh, thank you, Zach. I appreciate that, man. We'll be checking this out. I'm so pumped about this one. It's funny because Billy Fighter was mentioning to me the other day that he wanted to do like a working ship mod. And I'm like, I'm sure we're close to that. And then I see your airship. <laughs> this is functionally the same thing, right? Um, awesome. Going to be looking at that soon. I might even have to stream tomorrow and look at it. I don't know. You guys down for a Monday stream? Let me know. Cool. Let's put it on there. Definitely, Gonzo. Okay, if you're down, I'm down, man. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a quick one. Mountain of Fear. So, yeah, anyways, uh, I have mixed feelings about, you know, like just assuming all mountains should be pointy. But this is a mountain. I think it makes sense to make pointy. That's just a beautiful shot. Holy smokes. That's great. I encourage you to check this one out. And, um, you know, uh experience it for yourself zach says the ship would need a track system or a good way to check for collision otherwise it's the same as the airship yeah no doubt right um i assume the airship can check for collision with statics and stuff right um or is that like an unsolved problem at the moment <laughs> oh boy i'm a little excited to check that out that's gonna be a cool lunch diversion and uh by the way if you're wondering this one is compatible with Mines and Caverns, which is another one that's getting re-added. We'll get to that eventually. But uh, you can read through the comments here, and people are indicating that we got compatibility. So, yeah. Massive Juice, my man, here confirming. So, yeah, cool. Thank you so much. Awesome. So, yeah, Mountain of Fear. Putting it on there. All right. New Elanibi, uh, another one that's getting the normal map treatment. Brilliant design by Seeloff. Just brilliant. Okay, um, we've already done this on the 5.x series, but we removed AOF containers because they've got some like N64 level meshes. You know, when you started a new game with total overhaul, everything's looking great, and then all of a sudden you see these wooden buckets that are that have like eight polygons on them, and it's just really out of place. So as much as the textures for this were awesome, I couldn't make them work with a better mesh. So we had to we had to junk it. And the buckets we have now look great though, so not a huge loss. 
Ah, uh, yeah, okay. And this is a new this is a new edition. Um Dun Mary Earns Aesthetica of Vardenfell by the Great Titty. Uh we got some HQ normal maps that they added. So let's go ahead and look at that actually. Let's see if DuckDuckGo can deal with this. Yeah, good job, DuckDuckGo. All right. Now Nexus is going to just ruin things for us. Here we go. All right. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add this. We already, I think, have this on the list. Oh, my God, I have too many tabs open. <sighs> yeah, we got it on the list already. We're just not mentioning the normal maps, which we need to do because they're great. All right. We're about reaching time here, but I want to get a few more out of the way before we say goodbye for the day. And uh, to be determined on the tomorrow stream, I'm not totally sure. I got a lot of gardening to do. <laughs> All right. I moved, oh yeah, so I moved, uh, I have a new books category, christened in by the Enwaz guide. And uh, so I figure we can move stuff like book rotate. Ooh, book rotate, we should be able to implement that in Lua now, right? Or soon. That would be great to have that one implemented in Lua, because yeah, this is a compatibility nightmare. It's got to be hard-coded, scripted for each book. Um, that would be cool to do with Lua. So anyway, a kind of a minor thing not worth noted. More normal maps. Here we go. So here's some good stuff. Here is some good stuff. Sothas just is a modding, you know, genius here. And we've been graced so many awesome stuff from Sothas. And uh, one of the ones that I want to add is it's a bit of a small one, but it's a very thoughtful Nice touch. It's an, it's another one of those small, really nice touches that you didn't know you wanted, but actually you really, really want it. Um, Sotha sixth house and sixth house amulet, and it basically makes the sixth house amulet into something that you may reasonably want to use. I mean, by default, like yeah, okay, let's make our personality worse. That's great. Could be useful in limited circumstances. Maybe you want to start a fight with somebody or something. But like now, be tempted, give in. Use its power. The house welcomes you. I mean, just, I love it. Great. Well done. Um, anything to provide more potential gameplay variety or even role play potential, right? You're role playing as somebody who's tempted by a sixth house, you know. Um, I like it. I wanted it the moment I saw it. It's getting added. All right. And we'll look at one more. Before we say goodbye for the day. And that's going to be RR Mod Series, Better Ships and Boats. And this one has been a bit of a tricky one to pull in. Because there's a lot of conflicts. Which I'm still working to resolve, actually. But I do intend to resolve them fully. And add this into the list. Because the boats in it are so sick. It's just... We're going to end it with a quick look at... Excuse me some of the boats that it adds, but yeah, I mean, excuse me, looks like uh, over by Ebenhard over here. Let's go in there. Let's take a look. Just magnificent, but there's con conflicts with Tomb of the Snow Prince, OAAB Shipwrecks, and who knows what else. Um, but uh, the two OAAB Shipwrecks and Tomb of the Snow Prince conflicts are pretty significant. Um... We got boats showing up in the old position of Soul Sime and, you know, other things like that. Stuff we don't want, you know. Uh, full shipwrecks appearing over the sweet OAAB shipwrecks and, and things of that nature. So I fixed those shipwrecks, but have yet to fix the Snow Prince conflict. So that's pending. Actually, I could probably do that with Lua too, right? Is there, hmm, Zach, if you're hearing this, is there a way to say in a certain cell, give me the stuff that comes from a certain plugin? Can we know that? Whoa! 
All right, I broke my own mod. <laughs> this is natural character growth and decay. Whoops. All right, well, just ignore that. This is why we have dev builds, folks. Code decay, yeah, right? Oh, the, the code decayed. I erased something. I got overzealous with deleting things. Um, but yeah, you can just see this boat here. It's just like, it's magnificent. You know, it's so cool looking. And, you know, in my opinion, we want this for sure. And it's worth the incompatibilities that it comes with. Um, it's been relatively easy to fix this stuff. So, you know, um, I'm going to continue on with the plan to add it. Just trying to get to Ebonheart here so we can see some more boats. Possibly cooking my potato a little bit. So, yeah. Oh, this also conflicted with Nordic Dagonfell. I had to make a patch for that, too. Three different mods this thing uh, was busted by. So, you know what, though? I wanted today to be the first day where we finished everything. And congratulations. We finally did it. If I look... Oh, no, no, we had another... No, no. We had one the very first day I marked as 100 because we only had one thing. But yeah, this is our first day where we have checked off everything on the list. Maybe we didn't solve every problem. Maybe we didn't find everything out. But we did everything we set out to do today. So... Yeah, hot diggity dog. Exactly right, Gonzo. Thank you to everybody for joining today. It was a blast. I loved having you all. And I loved looking at Morrowind and OpenMW. Next week, we'll probably be looking at that airship. I'm going to hop into that later today. Um, and I don't know, man. Stay, uh, stay tuned to your notifications. There might be some surprise streams later this week. Uh, I wish you all have a great day. Thank you again for joining. Until next time, happy modding. Cheers. <laughs>